Okay, so would you like to introduce yourself and then your job title and job description? Um, my name is Ricky Aureliana. I'm a film archivist. I'm uh, employed here at Mowal Fund, uh, which means Movie Workers Welfare Foundation. And I'm the head of the film archives. And what exactly, what exactly do you do as a film archivist? archivist. Yeah. Well, um, I keep the audiovisual uh, collection of the Mowal Fund, which means I have uh, uh, films and videos to keep and preserve. Uh, most of them are uh, produced uh, under the Mobile Fund Film Institute workshop. So I have uh, a lot of short film titles. Uh, this range from uh, animation, short narratives, documentaries, and of course experimental films. From all decades. Yes. All decades. So I was informed that this was just recent that we started to have a film archive here in the Philippines. Is that true? Well, yes. Um, formally, we have now what we call the National Film Archives of the Philippines. But um, the history of film ar archiving here in the Philippines, well, it started way back during the Marcos era wherein they um, I think this was during the later part or the early part of the 80s when they under the construction of the film palace the what we call the um, that building in the cultural center of the Philippines when they constructed it, they put an archive. It's known as the Film Archives of the Philippines, headed by, um, gosh, I forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still there until today? No. 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 After, after Marcos, when Cory came, mm -hmm. it was dissolved. So uh, all of the film collection actually were uh, scattered or should I say, uh, placed under the custody of uh, other government agencies like PDP Film Center, Cultural Center of the Philippines, um, and the uh, Philippine Information Agency. Okay. And would you say they were well preserved during that time? or? Well, I cannot say because uh, yeah, it was... Um, short-lived, I mean it didn't last for a decade, so right. uh, normally if you're going to judge the quality of archiving, it should be at least a decade, so you have to uh, check if the collection within that you know, 10 years was kept uh, in good order. Right. Right. But they have, uh, they have uh, quite uh, what we call um, uh, Uh, good titles. Most of the classic films they, they kept, like Himala and uh, Oro Plata Mata, which was, uh, I think, produced by the Experimental, the Exper Experimental Cinema of the Philippines. Okay, okay. And I seen that those were preserved recently. It was preserved because it, particularly Himala and uh, Oro Plata, because they were sold to abs and Film Archives, okay. and they restored it digitally. Right, right. Restored. But the original uh, copies of the film, if you're going to look at it, I mean, those were uh, those were already faded. Like, uh, I think Himala, if you take a look at the original uh, print, it looks uh, magenta. So they, they did a lot of uh, restoration for that film to look, you know, brand new. Right, right. Okay. And so how long have you been a film arch archivist? Well, as far as I can remember, um, 
I became an employee of Mobile Fund. Uh, it's like two years after I attended the film workshop here in, in Mobile Fund. And um, Mobile Fund was just, um, you know, with uh, Nick De Ocampo at the helm, meaning he's the one in charge of the Mobile Fund Film Institute. Um, is uh, more, should I say, forward uh, in, in, let's say, in propagating the, particularly the independent cinema here in the Philippines. So when I when I joined in, um, it just happened that. I like you know, uh, taking care of those, you know, short films that were uh, uh, produced by the by the students, and until the institute, you know, hired a lot of people, and and I I think I, I suggested that we look, Nick, we need uh, a film film archive. So it's like I I suggested my my position, <laughs> and that's how you got the job. Yeah. Okay. So as a film archivist, what exactly do you do in the office or your day to day in the office? Well, well, like uh, like recently, we just uh, turned over. No, not turned over deposited our entire film collection to the National Film Archives of the Philippines because uh, our office cannot, um, you know, do doesn't have that enough budget to maintain uh, the collection. So in order for the films to survive, we decided to have it de deposited in the National Archives. So what I have here right now are practically the magnetic tapes and the optical disc. Um, I'm also thinking of probably in the in the future we might again deposit those uh, those materials to the National Film Archives because our office is basically a foundation. It's a welfare welfare pro. Uh, uh, program and uh, most of the the budget right now uh, its priorities being channeled to the welfare so I, I don't have that much bud budget to work in maintaining a, an archive but right now what I'm, I'm doing is um, I'm doing an inventory of the collection because um, some of the materials that we have are still um, not included in the catalog because you have to sort them out, you have to organize it, and you have to uh, identify uh, which which category it belongs. It's part of, you know, um, cataloging. It's not just preserving film by storing it in a film vault and, you know, forget about it. It's more of a um, taking stock of what you have and make sure what you have, you preserve it, and at the same time, you let people um, use your collection for research purpose. So that's how, if, is that how it works when students are looking for, Yeah. they come here? Yes. Okay, okay. So the difference, what is the difference between Malfun and then the National Archive? Ah, yeah. Well, the National Film Archives of the Philippines is government, while this is a private entity. It's a non-stop, non-profit uh, foundation so um, they have the budget 
we don't. <laughs> okay, so that's okay. the big difference. Because um, you cannot run an, an archive if you don't have a budget. It me you mean that the collection, especially film material, needs um, a good environment, like a film storage that has a 24-hour air conditioning and dehumidifying. Uh, and is that provided here, or what type of storage? Well, what I did was, uh, be because most of our film collection before were stored at the Philippine Information Agency, when, when the films were repatriated, so um, I have a film vault provided for those for, for the for those collection but um, it's hard for for the company to uh, provide the air conditioning so what what we um, prioritize are the video collection so at least those videos were kept in an air conditioning room but again it's not running for 30, 24 hours like like an ideal, uh, you know. Is it half day? Um, yeah. Few, half day. Office okay. hours. Office, wow, <laughs> okay. So what type of films do you have from the golden era, from 1950s, 60s? Well, I don't have uh, that much old film material, but we do have the earliest um, existing film pre-war film, which is uh, Zamboanga, made in 1937. So it's a sound film, uh, it's a sound movie, and uh, that's that's the oldest that we have. Unfortunately, most of our silent film made by the by Nepomosen were, you know, it's nowhere to be found. Those are lost. Because of well, uh, because during the, those times, there were no archiving. And uh, I don't know how they were stored during the, those times. I mean, after the screening, probably they were stored in a bodega or a ware warehouse. And then, so most of them are probably destroyed then. Yes. And silent film, they use nitrate. Those are Flammable, right, right. Yeah. So it's kind of dangerous also to store. So I would I would also think that probably they also destroyed them for safety. Okay. Okay, so um running out of uh, questions here, I think that's about good. But um what do you what do you see the future of film archiving here in the Philippines? Is it getting better? Improving okay. or well, it took took us a very long time to really uh, uh, go in the in that direction. But uh, I, I I should I can say that it's slow but sure direction, and uh, with more awareness, especially uh, for the younger generation to appreciate the what. Uh, what archiving is, you know, it's about preserving our history. So uh, that's the that's the most important thing, because um, you know the there's a surge of independent filmmaking, but um, it's also sad that most of the young generation of uh, film artists doesn't know the legacy part of the history where they came from so it's really the task of the, the archivist really to, uh, to to preserve these documents these historical documents this historical cultural documents so I think um, I'm very optimistic and I'm looking forward to the construction of the uh, the film archives 
because the National Film Archives, uh, their their current facility is is uh, it's a temporary facility. What they're trying to uh, uh, plan is to come up with uh, a structure, a permanent structure that will house all the important Filipino films in, in our country. Thank you. So this uh, next question is just for fun. How would someone get into film archiving? Okay, that's a very good question. Wait a minute. I, probably, let's rephrase it. How does one qualify to be an archivist? For me, that person should be have this uh, enthusiast, enthusiasm in in film. Generally, he must be a film buff. He loves watching film, especially Filipino or Tagalog film, to qualify because that's part of the fun. I mean, um, if you're into it, then there's no problem for you to uh, to get into archiving because that's what you do. You watch and you write about it, you document it, you see that it complements. So yeah, I think that's, if you're, if you're interested and if, you're, if you love film, then I, I think you can, you can jump in and, you know, and uh, be part of the, the you know, close-knit, uh, slows, uh, I mean, uh, a few circle of uh, archivists.